So the title of my talk this evening is Proven Essential. And the reason that we've chosen that as a subject is because when we think of what we have at our disposal, what we've learned from history, from medicine, in terms of how to keep healthy people healthy, what do we really have in our toolkit that we know is research tested and proven effective? And I'd like to start our discussion tonight with asking this question. How did we get here? How did we get to the place where the obesity trends in the United States of America are absolutely out of control? How did we get to the place where back in the 1960s, about 14% of us were struggling with our weight, to by 2020, it's projected that 45% of the United States of America will be obese? Well, there are many answers, but it does boil down to a balance, an equation. Think of it like a teeter-totter, energy in, energy out. Now, there are all kinds of other things that can contribute to it. However, this is one of the driving forces. This is one of the crippling problems that we're dealing with as a society. However, I'm going to make the case tonight that there is yet another imbalance that may be equally as dangerous and may be even more important for us to correct. And that balance is the balance between omega-6 and omega-3, the two essential fatty acids that we don't make that we have to get in our diet. So why are we here? Why are we here at this place, at this time? Why are we here all of you tonight, when there are many other things that you probably could be doing, what would draw you to a lecture like this? Why is it that so many millions of people are now passionately interested in wellness, in prevention, and actually really concerned about helping to ease the suffering of their neighbors, of their friends, and their family? Well, let's face it. This is probably the biggest conversation that's being had in America today. How can we figure out how to reduce our health care costs? So I'm going to make a case tonight based on the data of what is proven effective and proven essential to make a difference. And now that we're here, what can we actually do about it? I think it's one thing to be excited. It's one thing to be motivated. I think it's another thing to have practical tools that we can take out, and when you leave this talk, you can share this information with the people that mean the most to you. And the place I'd like to really launch this conversation tonight is to take a look at what our mission is. Because our mission, and I believe your mission, or anybody's mission, really says quite a bit about who they are as a person or about that organization. And at Nordic Naturals, we rewrite our mission statement on a regular basis just to make sure that we're all on the same page. So this is our mission statement. We believe that omega oils are essential to life. Our bodies don't make them. We have to get them from our diet. And you'll see tonight why this balance is so critical. By correcting the global omega-3 deficiency, we give each generation what they need to grow healthy and strong. Through science and innovation, we are committed to delivering the world's safest, most effective omega oils. Now notice in this mission statement that it doesn't say anything about being the number one selling fish oil in the natural product channel. Notice how in the mission statement, it doesn't say anything about maximizing shareholder profits. Because that's not what our mission is. Our mission is to correct the global omega-3 deficiency. And we cannot do it alone. We need your help. As a result of us staying true to our mission, Nordic Naturals is the leading omega-3, the leading number one selling omega-3 in the entire category in the natural product channel. Backed by 40 ongoing studies, 20 studies that are published in peer-reviewed journals, many of those that get funding from the National Institutes of Health. We've done an extraordinary job. Now it's time to do more. And that's why we have talks like this. 
to help motivate and teach people so they understand the criticality of the other elephant in the room. And the other elephant in the room, next to the fact that we eat too much and we don't work out enough, is omega-6. We cannot talk about omega-3 without talking about omega-6. And you'll learn more tonight. Because these two fatty acids balance each other. They compete with each other for conversion and placement. You'll learn more. Let's take a look at our elephant in the room. And here is our elephant. Corn oil, chicken, safflower, sunflower, soybean oil. Those are some of the top sources of omega-6 in the American diet. Think about how much corn oil, how chicken is being pushed, safflower, sunflower, soybean oil, cotton seed oil, and seed oils are relatively new to the American experience. It's really only the last 50, 60 years that they have been pushed instead of butter, or lard, or tallow. So here's our elephant in the room, right there. And I want you to think of this balance the same way we think about working out more or eating less. Both can help achieve your desired weight. We've got all of this omega-6 in the diet, and to create the balance that we are missing, we're going to need fish, fish, fish. Just think about it for a moment. The places where people live the longest today, where they're the healthiest, whether it's in the Pacific Rim or in the Mediterranean, some of the northern European countries, fish is a staple for healthy diet because it's loaded with omega-3 that will help balance all of the omega-6. We could also eat purified fish oil supplements like Ultimate Omega. We could use algae oils that are now up and coming. We could eat more seaweed. We could eat more flax meal. We could eat more green leafy vegetables. Those are all sources of omega-3. However, the most potent sources are fish and concentrated fish oil to balance this overload of omega-6 from our vegetable oils. So every great story has a paradox that it's anchored in. And this is a remarkable discovery. In the late 1960s, Danish scientists had heard that these Inuit in, uh, up there in Arctic Greenland were not suffering with the same sort of health heart challenges that the Danish were suffering, or even here in the United States of America. But they were eating fat for breakfast. And I'm sure most of us recall that we were told that fat is bad, and you don't want to eat fat. And then here are these people that are eating fatty foods all the time, whale and blubber and seal and fatty fish, and they're having these completely different health outcomes. Well, the scientists went up there and discovered that these Greenland Inuit were consuming 13,700 milligrams of omega-3 per day. I mean, let's try to put that into terms for ourselves. If you took two capsules of Ultimate Omega, you'd get 1,000 milligrams of EPA and DHA. They're consuming 13,700 milligrams of omega-3 per day, and they were only eating 5,400 milligrams of omega-6 per day. They weren't eating corn oil, soybean oil, safflower, sunflower oil, and they had extraordinary heart cholesterol, health. Cholesterol, that the cholesterol was the major biomarker, and if we lower cholesterol, we're somehow going to be able to lower death. Well, this was the Eskimo paradox, and it set the stage for omega-3 and the omega-3 revolution, and finally by 2004, the FDA looked at the weight of all of the data, and they're very conservative. There are a lot of vitamins and supplements that are in our industry that are out in the health food store shelves that may have some benefit, but may not be proven essential. And the FDA looked at the totality of the evidence, and they said, OK, there's something really here. Omega-3 EPA and DHA may reduce the risk of coronary vascular disease and coronary heart disease. So now you have probably the most widely celebrated seriously researched, proven effective dietary supplements or interventions that we've ever had. Now in 2009, Harvard University took an exhaustive look at the preventable causes of death. And this was the first time that we'd ever seen this in the literature. 
They actually calculated that if people quit smoking, we'd save 475,000 lives a year. Followed next by high blood pressure, which we lose about 400,000 people to a year. Next, dealing with the overweight, obesity, and high body mass index. Physical inactivity. High blood glucose from eating a diet loaded with sugar. High LDL cholesterol. High dietary salt sodium. And then look at where this red arrow is. Omega-3 deficiency. Low dietary omega-3 fatty acid seafood is connected to 100,000 preventable deaths per year. More than people we lose to high trans fatty acids. We know how bad they are. They actually, the government had to ban them from the, our diet and our food supply. And then low intake of fruits and vegetables. So this is the crux of what's proven essential. If you do the math and you add up all of these lives, two and a half million people a year could be saved if people actually quit smoking, ate less, worked out more, stopped eating Pam and Spam and Ding Dongs and Chicken Nuggets and Hoes and Krispy Kremes, ate more fish or omega-3, ditched the trans fatty acids, and eat more fruits and vegetables. That's proven effective and proven essential. Now when you see this list, just think of all of the other trendy products that are out in the dietary supplement world that are being promoted as some kind of a silver bullet. And then ask yourself, where is the evidence? You see, with omega-3 and with fish, we have some of the strongest language ever. This report that also came out from Harvard, from their medical school, their Department of Epidemiology, says modest consumption of fish or fish oil together with quitting smoking and regular moderate physical activity should be among the first line treatments for the prevention of CHD death and sudden cardiac death. That's powerful. That's powerful. So we now understand, based on the literature, you can put taking omega-3 fish oils and eating more fish and reducing the omega-6 in the same sentence as quitting smoking and exercising regularly. And I will challenge most people still do not take enough omega-3, even if the evidence is there. So I'm a bit of a history buff, and I wanted to find out, how did we get into this mess? How did we get to the place where we were totally out of balance? How do we get to the place where the average person today is eating 20 to 25 times more omega-6 than omega-3? When back in antiquity they didn't, they had a perfect balance. A balance between seeds and green leafy vegetables. The people that eat more fish and less refined foods and less vegetable oils have infinitely better health. So I started digging and exploring. And I found this buried in the Library of Congress. Here's an ad from the First World War that's telling people to eat more, eat as much as you can of corn. There's a corn ad right here. Wholesome, nutritious foods from corn. Corn starch, corn oil, corn syrup. And look at the logic. Now remember, corn by itself is not bad, but corn is a very intense source of omega-6. And what is the logic here? Corn products are plentiful, so use them. Brought to you by the United States Food Administration. Now I'm not a conspiracy theorist at all. I believe that it was based on the very best evidence at the time. That was then. Let me show you something we now know. Based on cutting edge work from the National Institutes of Health, here is a list uh, of omega-6 on this side here, amount of omega-6. This is omega-3. And down at the bottom of this graph is 1909. And at this end, it's 1999. So as omega-6 has gone up in the diet from 1909 to 1999, it's gone up multiple times beyond what you need it in turn forces omega-3 down. Think of our teeter-totter. If you jack up all that omega-6 in the diet, it forces omega-3 out of the tissues. We've also learned from the same report at the National Institutes of Health that soybean oil consumption has increased 1,000 fold between 1909 and 1999. Now the real gist of it was this report right here, 1961, from the American Heart Association. And the American Heart Association told us to stop eating butter and to start using vegetable oils. So I have here a copy 
of the report back in 1961, and this is actually what became dogma. We all heard it from our doctors, did we not? Don't eat the butter, eat the margarine. So I'd like to read from the report what was actually said according to the American Heart Association in 1961. And listen closely to the language. The reduction or control of fat consumption under medical supervision with reasonable substitution of polyunsaturated for saturated fats. Remember they told you don't eat the butter, use the corn oil. So you wanted the unsaturated fats. Is recommended as a possible means of preventing atherosclerosis and decreasing the risk of heart attacks and strokes. Possible. This recommendation is based on the best scientific information available at the present time. More complete information must be obtained before final conclusions can be reached. Such information can be obtained only through intensified research into the causes and prevention of atherosclerosis, a program to which the American Heart Association is fully dedicated. Does that sound like an absolute ironclad understanding of what causes heart disease? Do you hear all of the caveats in that statement? And somehow that advisory was turned into dogma and an ad campaign like no other ad campaign tried to convince us that carrots were equivalent to margarine and that oranges were equivalent to margarine. These are actual ads trying to convince people that vitamin A is the plus in carrots, polyunsaturates are the plus in mazola. Remember the statement, you want to switch the saturated fats for the unsaturated fats. Vitamin C is the plus in oranges, polyunsaturates are the plus in mazola. However, those corn oils are liquid omega-6. And when the report said we needed to do more research, we certainly did. They wouldn't stop. They tried to convince everybody, use your Mazzola corn oil. Look at this. Take your ad, this ad to the doctor. And there's their little cholesterol lowering down. Because that's what they noticed. If you switched from butter to using some of this corn oil, you did get a little drop in your cholesterol levels. But does that mean that we became healthier as a country? The evidence is surprising and shocking that we were not able to turn this into a massive reduction in heart conditions and in struggling and in health challenges like metabolic derangement because it doesn't work. This report that came out the end of last year from the National Institutes of Health all polyunsaturated fatty acids are not created equal because omega-3 is different than omega-6. And if you listen closely to the advisory, they lump them all in together. They didn't differentiate that our friends that ate lots of fish, well, they got omega-3, and the omega-3 produces the anti-inflammatory hormones. And the omega-6, well, they do the opposite. You need to have some pro-inflammatory hormone-like compounds. That turns the immune system on. That thickens your blood, which is good if you get attacked by a wild animal. <laughs> However, you don't want to be walking around loaded with pro-inflammatory hormone-like compounds, which is what happens when you take too much omega-6. So this is a debate that's been waging for quite some time. This is the latest iteration thanks to Dr. Chris Ramsden and Dr. Joe Hiblin and their colleagues at the NIH. They recently published this paper, and look at what it says. In the Rose Corn Oil trial, this was the first randomized control trial to prove that corn oil was good for you. Experimental dieters consuming an extra 15% of energy nearly from omega-6 corn oil had a 4.6-fold increase in the risk of both CHD death and death from all causes. I hardly call that a glaring endorsement. It goes on in the paper to say they wouldn't recommend substitution of corn oil as a solution for public health policy. They also go on to point out that the Sydney Diet Heart Study, that consumption of safflower oil and safflower oil polyunsaturated margarine 
produced a 49% increased risk of death from all causes. So this puts us into a bit of a conundrum when we go back and we see more ads. Here's one for Puritan sunflower oil brought to you by Procter & Gamble trying to convince America to polyunsaturate, and they were relentless. This one here, tonight the night's Mrs. Ed Flynn starts polyunsaturating her husband. I don't know, do not know exactly what the message was in this kind of advertisement, but they were trying everything they could to convince people to use these vegetable oils. This one's also quite alarming. The Schifano kids started polyunsaturating grandma. Now, based on nearly a five-fold increased risk of death from all causes, you may not want to be doing that. So let's now put this together so that you can tie together what we've learned so far. Our balance, energy in, energy out. We get it. Eat less, work out more. Hey, you want to eat 15,000 calories a day? Swim like Michael Phelps or any of the other Olympic athletes. Have at it. Balance. Omega-6 converts into the unhealthy inflammatory response from the pro-inflammatory hormone-like compounds. If you're eating corn oil, soybean, safflower, sunflower oil, or foods fried in these oils, you've got the raw material in your tissues to give yourself a really hard time of resolving inflammation, which we know, appreciate, and understand is the driving force connected to most of our health challenges. Omega-3, EPA, DHA, and GLA are the counterbalance. You see, the enzymes, they don't care what you eat. They're happy enough to convert omega-6 into pro-inflammatory compounds or omega-3 into anti-inflammatory compounds. Now get this, aspirin and COX-2 inhibitors, which we've all heard of, we've all taken, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, or aspirin, one time or another, works by blocking these enzymes. The reason that aspirin will kill pain and thin your blood is it blocks the actions of omega-6. That's right. Aspirin works by blocking omega-6. What else blocks all of that omega-6? Well, first of all, not eating it, number one. And number two, eating more omega-3. Now, there's always an exception to the rule. And the exception to the rule is what we call GLA. GLA is different than most of the omega-6s because GLA is found in evening primrose, borage, and black currant seed. Those are pretty esoteric foods. Has anybody in our talk tonight ever eaten a borage flour or evening primrose oil? Maybe a little bit of evening primrose oil because that was pushed for female hormonal issues. I think that was oversimplified. We should all be taking some of it. But it's pretty rare stuff and you don't find much of it in nature. And it has a very potent anti-inflammatory property of itself. It also seems to support skin health in a very unique way by helping to eliminate the bad cells and causes your body to create all of the antioxidants. We have powerful systems to create antioxidants. So this borage flower, this 369 combination that Nordic Naturals has, gives you the omega-3 that we're desperately missing. It gives you this omega-6 from borage flower to help support the skin by creating this tsunami of natural antioxidants and omega-9 that we find in olive oil, which is also good for our skin, that's naturally occurring in the fish. So this is a balance. When we hear mix the six and eat the three, the caveat would be the complete 369 because the omega-6 GLA is different. It's a great omega-6. In fact, it's one of the products that we have extensively researched and tested. Back in 2005 in Autism and Asperger's Digest, we were part of a study that demonstrated that the complete 369, the results of this study, strongly support the benefit of essential fatty acids on language and learning skills in autism and Asperger syndrome. So research on the Finnish branded product is very important to us at Nordic Naturals. So let's recap so that we're on the same page here. This is a cage, cage match. This is a fight. This is really a fight 
to the death. If we can now demonstrate that omega-6 produces the pro-inflammatory hormone-like compounds and omega-3 produce the anti-inflammatory hormone-like compounds, it's not oversimplified to say, well, in the green corner we have omega-3 and in the red corner we have omega-6, and so how do you win the match? It's a good question. How do you win the match? Well, based on all of the omega-6 in our diet, we need more omega-3 than we thought. We need to eat more fish than we thought. And based on the current data, if you eliminate the omega-6 in your diet to the best of your ability, don't buy corn oil, soybean oil, safflower, sunflower oil. Use maybe a little bit of uh, canola oil, maybe some coconut fat, maybe a little bit of butter, some olive oil. Those are the ones that are lowest in omega-6. Stop using the high omega-6 oils and then consume the equivalent of 3,000 milligrams of EPA and DHA every day. 3,000 milligrams of EPA and DHA per day. That's how much we need to get our teeter-totter perfectly balanced. Now what says the American Heart Association today about omega-3? So their current recommendation, which you can find on their website, says that if you need to lower triglyceride levels, those dangerous blood fats, that when you go to your doctor and you have a blood test and you have high triglycerides, she wants to tell you to exercise more, eat better, and maybe look at certain pharmacological interventions, they say you need 2,000 to 4,000 milligrams. The American Heart Association today says that you may need up to eight capsules of Ultimate Omega to lower elevated triglycerides. So what we now understand, which is so profound about this conversation, is that the amount of omega-3 you need to take every day depends on how much omega-6 you eat and how much protection you want and how many demands there are on your immune system. So the amount that you need, the amount that I need, the amount that you need or you need is all individual. This isn't like, take 50 milligrams of vitamin C and call me in the morning. Each and every one of us will need a different amount of omega-3 based on the background diet. If you eat less omega-6, you need less omega-3. If you eat more fish and seaweed and flax meal and chia and hemp, it's all these things that are loaded with the short and long chain omega-3, you're great. If you don't eat fish, 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 fish all the time, and you're up against the American diet that's laden, covered with these omega-6 vegetable oils, then you need more. So let's take a look at what that would cost using the Nordic Naturals products. Now using the accurate data, the most recent data, so that we're not guessing. It would take two and a quarter teaspoons of the ultimate omega, or the omega-3 liquid rather, the standard omega-3 liquid, two and a half teaspoons per day, would give you 3,094 milligrams of EPA and DHA, and it would only cost you $1.18 per day. You can put this in the same breath as the most important interventions out there. Can you imagine for that value for $1.18 a day? When there are so many things in the health food stores that are certainly expensive, that may be very beneficial, that might not be proven like this. What about grandma's cod liver oil? She was right. Two and three quarter teaspoons gives you 3,025 milligrams of EPA and DHA for $1.47 per day. An unbelievable value for the return you get. What if you don't like the liquids? Well, you could take the ultimate omega capsules. Six capsules gives you 3,300 milligrams. That costs $2.54 per day. And if you go with the liquid, that's only $1.63 per day. We have a new one called Ultimate Extra, meaning it's just more concentrated by volume. So you take fewer capsules. That's $2.66 per day. And if you took the Ultimate Omega Extra Liquid, it's $1.67. A very small price to pay for one of the most potent, powerful, and proven and essential interventions that we will ever have at our fingertips. So how does it stack up next to the other omega-3 sources that are in the marketplace? You hear a lot about krill oil, 
It's being marketed heavily. And then salmon oil, cold pressed salmon oil, it was something that was heavily promoted and touted over the last couple of years. We have fads come and go in the natural product industry, fashion, sort of speak. But I like to be a little bit more conservative when it comes to looking at the data and making a sort of objective assessment. If it's going to cost $2.54 per day if you took six capsules of Ultimate Omega, you'd have to take enough krill oil. It would end up costing you $9.30 to get the same 3,000 milligrams. And if you took salmon oil, it could cost $10.80 for the trendy salmon oil. So it really does speak volumes for the value. One of the best ways to make an accurate decision is to look at the price per 100 milligrams of EPA and DHA. And that way you know you're getting the best value. In addition, make sure that the fish oils that you're taking are researched and proven effective. We have 20 published studies, 14 clinical trials, 40 more in progress with every single one of our products in the natural triglyceride form. That means that the body recognizes it more efficiently. It means it's more stable. It means that the Nordic Naturals products are the same delivery system as eating a fresh fish. New data that I'll show you suggests that it's 70% more bioavailable. And most of our work, this is very exciting to, to admit, Multiple studies are funded by the National Institutes of Health because of our exceptional quality and manufacturing standards. Safety is also critical. When you're talking about taking more fish oil than we had thought before, you want to make sure that it's proven safe. We've got a technique on how we make fish oil that yields the industry-leading fish oils that have 50 times lower levels of PCBs and dioxins than the industry standard. You don't want mercury in your fish oil. You don't want endocrine disruptors in your fish oil. So you want one that has very low levels of contamination. Our products have obtained the highest purity results from independent Proposition 65 interest groups. And in the final analysis, you can call Nordic Naturals or any company and request a certificate of analysis. That's why groups like the American Pregnancy Association partnered with Nordic Naturals. They have their logo on our label because we could demonstrate how pure, how fresh, and how clean the fish oil is, which is critical for mom because every mom needs omega-3, specifically DHA. We know that omega-3 deficiency has been implicated in infertility, premature birth, and postpartum depression levels, which also seem to be climbing over the last 50 years. We know that this omega-3 prolongs pregnancy with no detrimental effect to the newborn. We've got a startling report from the World Health Organization just came out called Born Too Soon. The CDC is calling what we're experiencing now the teeny baby boom. We're getting bigger and the kids are getting smaller and smaller. And it's a terrifying risk, not only for the children, but for the future healthcare suffering and costs of those kids. We also know the progression of healthy labor is dependent upon these hormone-like compounds, which are also produced by omega-3 EPA. We know that these compounds reduce inflammation, attenuating discomfort, and also increasing the healing post-delivery without increasing bleeding risk. We know postpartum depression risk increases with successive pregnancies, and DHA much must be replenished. We've also recently learned that girls may need more omega-3 than boys. And the reason for that is, is because young girls have to meet their own nutritional needs while they are storing omega-3 for our future generations. Meaning they have to have enough for their own brains, their own eyes, their own nervous system, and then they need to store it in their adipose tissue because they give it away to build the brain and the eyeballs and the nervous system of our next children. And every baby needs DHA. We know that the most rapid brain growth occurs during the last four to five weeks of pregnancy. However, preterm birth rates are rising sharply. So that's a problem. We know that preterm birth is the most common cause of low infant birth weight, morbidity, and mortality. 
The WHO declared the DHA deficiency a cause of suboptimal fetal development in a report entitled Nutrition for Health and Development Making Pregnancy Safer. Research has also found a correlation between higher levels of omega-3 in the cord blood and memory scores in school-age children, meaning the higher the levels of omega-3 in mom's tissues, the better retention the child is showing. And breast milk low in DHA may be a risk factor for dermatitis, and maternal supplementation with DHA is associated with immunomodulation, a critical need for preemies. So we better do this. Can you imagine now that you're putting all of this together? Three generations into, how many of us eat fish all the time? How much of us, how many of us, our families, follow the directions and we were doing the right thing and listening to our experts and using corn oil and soybean and safflower and sunflower oil. And I'll speak for just one second as a concerned parent and not as a teacher. Go to any school, I don't care where it is. I don't care how strong the community is. What's happening with our kids? What is going on? We can blame it on all kinds of external factors. There may be something organic. There may be a massive organic deficiency in brain function, which may be leading to all of this absolutely gross behavior that we're seeing. We know that the next big area for omega-3 research is in mental health, because the brain is a supercomputer made out of fat. And actually, DHA levels, when you're born, you have about 16% DHA in your brain and about 33% when you get to 80. So there's something about getting wiser, right? As we age, more wisdom. Well, we know that omega-3 improves disposition, mood swings, lessens feelings of anger, supports clear thinking. And we know that brain cells with enough omega-3 are better able to deal with all of these mood-related brain signals and to keep the firing in the brain, the spark plugs, the synaptic firing in check. So because we're so dedicated to research at Nordic Naturals, here's one of our studies that was just published February of this year that shows that a combination therapy was more effective than monotherapy, meaning combining the fish oil with the serotonin reuptake inhibitors, right? There are a lot of people now on mood medication and antipsychotic medication, which you may be getting a clear understanding may be connected to some deficiencies in the brain. I won't go that far. I will tell you what the scientists have discovered, that the combination of the drugs with the fish oil was more effective in decreasing signs and symptoms of major depressive disorders. During the eight weeks of active treatment, these findings suggest that there may be an advantage to combining omega-3 fatty acids with selective serotonin uptake inhibitors in the initial treatment of individuals with major de depressive orders. We also know that inflammation in the brain is directly connected to a lot of these mood challenges. Again, using the Nordic Naturals EPA formula, treatment for eight weeks with omega-3 fatty acids resulted in a significant percentage reduction, 40% reduction in one of the biomarkers for inflammation, C-reactive protein, compared with baseline findings not seen with placebo. So for mental health, it's absolutely critical. It's also critical for our joints as we age, because now you understand the role of how omega-3 is different than aspirin. Aspirin blocks omega-6. Omega-3 supports the body's natural anti-inflammatory response. That's different. Supports cardiovascular and respiratory function. Supports joint flexibility and mobility. Here's a study that we did using the Ultimate Omega, published in the journal Surgical Neurology. Dr. Joseph Maroon is the head of the neurosurgery department at Pittsburgh School of Medicine and the team neurosurgeon for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And in this report, our results mirror other controlled studies that compared to ibuprofen and omega-3 fatty acids demonstrating equivalent effect in reducing arthritic pain. Omega-3 fish oils supplements appear to be safer alternatives to non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs for treatment of non-surgical neck or back pain in this selective group. 
when you dissect the study, 60% of the patients threw the pain medication in the garbage. 60%. What was the pain medication doing? It was blocking the omega-6. What happens when you right-size our teeter-totter? Isn't this amazing? You create the balance and the body does what it's supposed to do. It is a rem it's remarkably different. This isn't a drug. This is feeding the body to regain homeostasis. Look at that, 60%. Stop taking the prescription medication. So when you go to our website and you look up these products, look for this blue box that says clinical research. When you go out into the store, when you look at the products here, the, study, the products that have two or more human studies will have a little blue box here that says clinical research. You can click on this tab and it will redirect you to the U.S. National Library of Medicine, the National Institutes of Health database, so that you can then find the peer-reviewed scientific study on the finished branded product. Why is that important? So that you can trust that what you're taking has been research tested and proven effective. Getting back to our ultimate omega research, here's one that we did with professional athletes back in 2009. You had Yates, Norwig, of course, Dr. Maroon. Omega-3 supplementation can have significant effects on key blood cholesterol subfractions. Looking at the dangerous subfractions, which may positively impact risk factors for heart and vascular disease. We also have a special sports product for people that are physically active. If you work out all the time, you hold more of this omega-6 in your tissues. Isn't that fascinating? You hold more omega-6 in your tissues because you need it for all kinds of adjustments. Heart rate variability, the blood viscosity, pain signals. So the people that are physically active, that exercise a lot, actually need more omega-3 to balance. And the latest research is quite exciting. Here's a paper in 2011. Ingestion of omega-3 can be effective in ameliorating exercise-induced inflammatory markers. So we've set the stage. We understand the benefit. How can we objectively assess fish oils? How do we know that we are getting the very, very best products that are out there? I will make a case that's based on science, not marketing. Because let's face it, what does marketing do? People that normally get to do what I do and companies that are out there promoting themselves are marketing. They're not necessarily talking about the science, are they? I mean, let's face it, marketing's job is to get you to borrow money that you don't have to buy things you probably don't need to impress people you probably don't even care for. That's not what we do at Nordic Naturals. That's not what the research and education department does at all. So I will give you what I believe is an ironclad overview as to why you can trust Nordic Naturals based on the latest research. This paper that just came out from the Norwegian Scientific Committee for Food Safety the description of the processes in the value chain and risk assessment for the decomposition substances and oxidative products in fish oil is unbelievable. Look at what it says. Currently, there's no mandated international, European, or national legislation on the standards for origin, quality, and or composition of marine omega-3 oils and their concentrates for food or food supplements. What does that mean? You can make whatever you want. That's what that means. The content of decomposition substances, oxidation and process generated substances in crude fish oil is dependent on freshness, composition of the raw material, processing parameters, time, pressure, and temperature. Therefore, further refinement is essential for the production of food supplements. That's why we filter our fish oils. That's why we molecularly distill the fish oils, to remove all of the bad things you don't want. It then goes on to say that a detailed description of the industrial processing is not available in the scientific literature. Well, what does that mean? That means that you should trust a proven source because there are no standards that are written in the scientific literature. There's also some concern related to the regular consumption of oxidized marine oils. What does that mean? Remember grandma's cod liver oil that tasted fishy? It was oxidized. 
We now know that those oxidized little products that are in there that make it taste fishy are now also possibly dangerous. What we've learned is long-term exposure to the dietary lipid peroxides may also have negative effects locally in the gastrointestinal tract, which is why you would belch it up, why you would have an upset stomach from taking a cheap fish oil, which is why you want to go to a good health food store and get something that's quality. And it's also desirable that the concentration of the primary oxidation products, what we call the peroxides, remain as low as possible. So demand a third-party test for potency. We've also just found out that feeding highly oxidized oils to animals clearly has negative effects on both the macroscopic level, such as changes in body weight or organ indices, and the biochemical level with changes in markers of oxidative stress, organ damages, and changes in thyroid hormone metabolism. So you get what you pay for. If you're buying cheap oxidized fish oils, not only do they taste bad, not only are you belching them up, you could be damaging your thyroid. It goes on, it's difficult to say at which dose the effect appears since the measurements of oxidation used in these studies are not quantitative. Because the whole oxidized oil contains a complex mixture of oxidation products and process generated products, it is also not possible to say which products cause these adverse health effects. So how do you avoid all that? You use a trusted source like Nordic Naturals. When we look at the European Food Safety Authority that just published their paper on the tolerable upper limit, they say that supplemental intake of EPA and DHA consumed either alone or in combination of doses up to five grams per day. And the case I made today was for three, up to five grams per day for 16 weeks do not change lipid peroxidation which might raise concern for relation to CVD risk as long as the oxidative stability of the omega-3 is guaranteed, as you know it is in the case with Nordic Naturals. So you can go to independent places like Consumer Lab, look at the price per 100 milligrams, see how fresh it is, does it pass. Other sources, here's some krill oil that didn't fare so well because of the oxidation. You can ask for a certificate of analysis from Nordic Naturals or any other manufacturer, or you could go here to IFOS, International Fish Oil Standards, Nutrisource Diagnostics in Canada. And every company that's reputable sends their fish oils to this third-party independent laboratory. And then they test all of the fish oils and then put all the results online so that you can make an objective assessment not marketing, not sales, science. Let's take a look at how we fare. Remember we were told that you want to avoid those peroxides? Remember we read that, that the peroxides are what can damage your thyroid and other organ indices? Passing is anything less than five. This batch from Nordic Naturals tested at 0.72. Dioxins and dioxin-like PCBs that can cause birth defects. You want anything less than three parts per trillion. This batch had 0.0774 parts per trillion. That's amazing. Based on the evidence, I can't point to anything cleaner, fresher, and purer. And in addition, there's two different forms of fish oil on the market. Most of the concentrated fish oils are in what we call the ethyl ester form, the free fatty acid ethyl ester form. This would be the CO2 extracted fish oils and the enterically coated fish oils and even the pharmaceutical fish oil that's being advertised on television. That's a remarkably different form than the triglyceride that Nordic Naturals makes. One, two, three, glycerol backbone. Natural, new to nature. Fish, semi-synthetic radically different. What do the experts say? According to the Norwegian Scientific Committee for Food Safety, triglycerides, which are what we make, are viewed as being more natural than other fatty acids, such as ethyl esters. The stability against oxidation seems higher when the omega-3 fatty acids are in the form of the triglyceride than as the ethyl ester. 
and the production of these concentrated triglycerides has therefore gained great interest. Let's go to the scientific literature. There's Jan Dyerberg who made the Eskimo discovery, still publishing in the seminal journal on fatty acids, prostaglandins, leukotrienes, and essential fatty acids. What did he find? That the concentrated form of fish oil, like the ultimate omega, 70% more absorbable than the ethyl ester form. So it's not just the freshness, it's not just the purity, it's also the delivery system and getting the right dose. In this paper in 2010, a six-month supplementation of identical doses, here they compared both forms of fish oil, found that the EPA and DHA led to a faster and higher increase in your tissues when you consumed it as a triglyceride, the Nordic Naturals form versus the ethyl ester form. And then if you go to the European Food Safety Authority, they say that the triglyceride is the major dietary form of omega-3 EPA and DHA, and that the enzymes, the pancreatic lipase, appear to have greater affinity or preference for the fatty acid glycerol bond over the fatty acid ethanol bond. If you want to learn more, you can go to omega-research.com. And this is a website where you can look up all of these things that I've discussed tonight. So how do we bring this to a close? How do we simplify this message so that you know how to communicate what we learned today to your friends and to your family when you go back? Because remember what it said? I said it's going to take all of us to correct the omega-3 deficiency. We're up against something ominous. Could you imagine the food manufacturers waking up one day and having to realize that they have to stop producing and feeding us huge amounts of corn oil and chickens that are fed corn and grain and factory farmed mm. cattle and vegetable oils like soybean oil. That stuff is everywhere. I'm not going to win that fight alone. It's going to take millions of us, just like we did with trans fatty acids, millions of us to vote with our dollars to correct the omega-3 deficiency. So how do we communicate this in the shortest, most succinct possible way? Well, proven essential. Omega-3 is proven essential. Your body doesn't make it. You have to get it through your diet. In fact, the American Heart Association, the FDA, the American Psychiatric, American Pregnancy Association all say that it's essential to life. It's also proven effective. Every single product of ours is in the natural triglyceride form. That gives you 70% greater absorption. We have 40 ongoing clinical trials, 20 that are published, and I showed you many of them today. Proven safe. We have 50 times lower levels of PCBs and dioxins than the industry standard, and great tasting. Please open up your little package that's on your chair, your little DHA little package, open that up, bite into that capsule, and taste how fresh that fish oil is. You have, you're going to do it right now. We're live. We're filming this. Everybody bite into that capsule. How does that taste? Does that taste fantastic? Just a burst of strawberry. How does that taste? I get to do this everywhere I go. Any fishy taste? No fishy taste. And then sustainability. You know how we really address sustainability today? If we stop eating corn oil, soybeans, safflower, sunflower, cottonseed oil, there's more than enough fish for everybody. That's the real crux of sustainability. And then, of course, at Nordic Naturals, we only use sustainable, wild-caught, non-GMO fish. But it does come down to taste, doesn't it? If you don't like the taste, you will not take the product. So for kids, we have these fishies and gummies and worms, all of these different treats where we put the omega-3 in there so even the pickiest kids will eat them. We have a new omega-3 jelly, which is just coming online. It may not be in this store yet. But it's got no sugar. It's got a little bit of xylitol in there from, from hardwood, from, from the beechwood, not from corn. And you get 250 milligrams of EPA and DHA in each little fish. And then in terms of sustainability, what I said earlier is important, and let's never forget it. We practice environmentalism in everything we do. We're a Norwegian-based company. Environmentalism for them is not some trendy thing. Sustainability has been part of their culture forever. We have 100% wild-caught fish, 
to our unlimited supply of non-GMO hexane-free algae. The algae is in a liquid, 200 EPA, 350 DHA, one and a half dropperfuls. 100% vegetarian, hexane-free, non-GMO. If you have vegetarian or vegan friends, instead of arguing with them anymore, they can take the algae omega. It's a fantastic alternative to fish, and I've recently learned that they're working on growing enough of this algae in America, in big stainless steel tanks, bless you, that they will eclipse all of the fish that are caught to make fish oil over the next 10 years. They're also working feverishly to put this algae, EPA, and DHA back into the food that we're feeding to our chickens and our hogs and our farm-raised fish to get the omega-3 levels higher in them. We also have a capsule, and the capsule has a, a algae shell on the outside, so there are a myriad of ways for us to get the job done. So what's essential to you? What's essential to us at Nordic Naturals is what's essential to you. Because our mission at Nordic Naturals is to correct the omega-3 deficiency. But I believe that there's something that's even more important than everything we covered tonight. More important than the science, more important than the papers, is for us to remember what we can do to help correct the omega-3 deficiency. Let's never forget that we cannot preach something that we don't practice. And there's something about that nonverbal communication in your eyes when you're talking to your friend, your family, your neighbor, your husband, your wife, your kids, that you care enough about yourself, that you love yourself enough to really take care of yourself. So I'll challenge you, correct your omega-3 deficiency. Be as healthy as you can possibly be. I'm not a reductionist. I covered all of the other interventions that are just as important. Quit smoking, eat less, work out more, nix the six, stop eating Pam and Spam and Ding Dongs and Chicken Nuggets and Hoes and Krispy Kremes. Eat more omega-3, ditch the trans fatty acids, eat more fruits and vegetables. That's proven effective. That'll save two and a half million preventable deaths a year. So what's essential to us? What's essential to us is this, delivering pure and great tasting omega oils. That's what we do. Achieving the highest standards of purity, safety, and efficacy, and acting with integrity. I did not make one statement tonight that we could not back up. I was at a conference a little while ago, and I saw the former Surgeon General, Richard Carmona. Does anybody remember Dr. Carmona? former Surgeon General, and he gave the keynote address at this big fatty acid conference, and he said, do not overstate the case, because the science is so good with omega-3, you don't need to overstate the case. Harvard University put taking fish oil in the same sentence as quitting smoking. There's nothing more you have to say. So acting with integrity is critical for us. Integrating sustainability in everything we do and promoting optimal health and wellness so we can do more of what we love with the people we love, to live an extraordinary life and pass it on. How do we pass it on? One way you can pass it on is to tell everyone else your story. If you took that 3,000 milligrams of EPA and DHA for three months and got another blood test, you'd know right there you're gonna get the test results. And then you start networking and telling people how you stopped using corn oil, soybean, safflower, sunflower, cottonseed oil. You used omega-3 higher oils or omega-6 lower oils like the canola oil, the olive oil, the coconut fat, a little bit of butter. You ate more fish, you took more omega-3, you're feeling better, you're looking better. That's how we spread this word. So what's essential to you? It's more of a rhetorical question for you to ask yourself. I will tell you what is essential to me. What is essential to me is easing the suffering of others. Because I know that service is the rent that I pay for my time on earth. And I do not like being away from my family as much as I am away from my family. I've taken this on not as a job, not as a career, this is a mission. This is a crusade. This is a calling. This is something that I am driven by power way greater than myself to do to help people in need all over the world. And sometimes it's at odds 
was me being at home with my loving wife and my son, Sebastian. And it's getting harder and harder every time I leave because he's nine years old now and we're really close and he'll say to me, Daddy, don't go. Please don't go. But I can look at him because I know in my heart, I can look him right in the eyes and I can say to him, Son, what is the most important thing in this house? And he knows it. To be of service. That's right, son. To be of service and to ease the suffering of others. That's the highest calling that there is on the planet Earth. And your father gets to do that every single day. He loves superheroes. So he's reading Superman and Batman and all these comic books. And I can say to him, do you know what I get to do every day? I get to go out there and correct the Omega-3 deficiency. I'm Omega Man. And he'll stand up on his little bed and say, yes, sir. So that motivates me every single day to know that this is not a sales pitch. This isn't some kind of an infomercial. This is probably the most powerful intervention that we can do to save untold suffering and billions and billions and billions of dollars that are dependent on us eating omega-6 all day long. Dependent. We can make a difference. So I hope we've made our case tonight that we understand the totality of our equation. Eat less, work out more, nix the six, eat the three, ditch the trans fatty acids, eat more fruits and vegetables, and maybe we can avoid the teeter-totter of death that causes abrupt decapitations. That's me in a boat in Arctic Norway. Thank you very much. Thank you.